Hello everyone, I'm Sue, but you guys can call me Pat. I get asked a lot of questions here on my YouTube channel in the comment section, as well as on my Discord. But perhaps the two most common questions that I get asked are, how do I get good gear in this game? And how do I know if a piece of gear is good or not? So the primary focus of this video is to try to help you, the viewer, answer those two basic questions. And I say try because it's gonna be different for everyone. The goals and what constitutes a good piece of gear for a brand new player versus the needs and goals of, say, a veteran who is trying to push the highest ranks of PvP are going to be vastly different. Since this video is primarily going to be focused towards newer players of Epic 7, I'm going to be operating under the assumption that you know absolutely nothing. While this video may be long, I will try my best to answer every single question you can have about gearing characters in this game, as well as how the equipment system works as a whole in Epic 7. If I've done my job correctly, you should walk away from this video with a strong understanding of how to obtain good gear and what types of gear you want on your heroes. So yeah, like I said, strap in, it's gonna be a long one, and I really do hope that I did a good job. If you do enjoy this video, if this is helpful, as always, please consider leaving me a subscribe or a like. It really helps out the channel here a ton. Now with my fancy introduction out of the way, let's just jump into it. Just like with many role-playing games, gear in Epic 7 has an item level as well as a rarity level associated with it. The higher the item level and rarity, typically the stronger the item will be. The highest item level currently obtainable in Epic 7 is level 90 as of the recording of this video. As far as rarity goes, equipment is color-coded with brown being the lowest, green being the second lowest, followed by blue, then purple, and finally red. To upgrade gear, you simply need to feed it equipment charms or other pieces of equipment that you no longer want. Equipment charms can be obtained throughout the various game shops and drops in a wide variety of game modes as well. While feeding old equipment you no longer want is going to be self-explanatory. The maximum level of gear is plus 15. The main statistic of the piece of gear will increase with every single level. However, the substats will only increase every three levels at intervals of 3, 6, 9, 12, and then finally 15, which again is the max. If the current piece of equipment does not have four substats, when reaching specific breakpoints, it will receive one eligible substat on that piece of gear at random with a random value between the highest and lowest values. The starting number of rolls on a piece of gear is as follows. Brown gear starts with no substats unlocked. Green starts with one substat unlocked. Blue starts with two substats unlocked. Purple starts with three substats unlocked. And finally, red starts with the maximum of four substats unlocked. Since pieces only receive five upgrades to substat totals, obviously the red color gear will end up having the most possible stats since they receive nine total substat rolls. Purple is the next best as it will receive eight total rolls. It's important to note that purple gear will receive its fourth substat at the plus 12 breakpoint, which is something we'll talk about later when we discuss the concept of speed checking. I could discuss the other colors in further detail, but only purple and red gear are seen as desirable in endgame when it comes to Epic 7, so there's not really a reason for you to ever roll anything lower than that unless you're really desperate or you are a brand new player that is just starting out as you're watching this video. This brings us to talking about item levels. Only gear of item level 85 or higher is seen as desirable. Why is that, you ask? Level 85 gear is able to be upgraded to level 90 using reforge materials, which can be obtained through the game's highest level hunts, as well as the game's various different expeditions. Some gear is also level 88 and is obtained through various different events, quests, or can be purchased with various different currencies, such as conquest points. Level 88 gear is functionally similar to level 90 in most cases, although it can be ever so slightly worse, say having 10 less flat attack, which is incredibly negligible at the end of the day. Regardless, the goal by now should be obvious. You want to ideally only be upgrading gear that is level 85 or higher, and that is of the purple or red rarity. These pieces give the best stats and therefore give you the best heroes in the long run. 
when you're first starting out, upgrading the various different level 70 plus gear that the game gives you for free is definitely a good idea. Just know that as you start clearing harder hunts in Epic 7 and you start receiving 85 plus gear, you really only should be investing your resources into those pieces. The various different level 75 and 78 pieces that you receive from events are largely traps and a waste of resources in most cases, at least in my opinion. On your screen now, you'll see the stat ranges that level 85 gear can roll on Epic 7. When you receive a piece of 85 gear, it will have between three and four of these stats and have a value corresponding to some value between the lowest and highest rolls. When a piece of gear reaches plus three, plus six, plus nine, plus 12, or plus 15, these substats will increase. Each of these increases has the same range as the starting rolls. That is to say, they're the same values as listed on the table. For example, you can have a sword with attack percentage. This attack percentage can be anywhere from 4 to 8% to begin with. When the sword is upgraded to plus 3, if attack percentage is randomly chosen as the upgraded substat, it will again increase between 4 to 8%. This means that the lowest possible attack percentage roll for a plus 3 sword that has rolled once into attack percentage would be 8%. The highest value it can have rolled would be 16% if it had started at 8% and rolled 8%. Notice that the highest possible roll is double the value of the lowest possible roll. When rolling for gear, you should try to choose pieces with high starting rolls to increase the chances of a stronger piece. The only reason to roll pieces of gear with low rolls is if it has ideal substats for a specific character or you are simply speed checking the piece. We'll talk more about speed checking in detail later on in this video. Some characters, such as damage dealers, really want most of their pieces of gear to contain attack percentage, crit chance percentage, crit damage percentage, and speed. Given the huge amount of RNG in Epic 7's gear system, sometimes it's worth it to roll on a low piece if it has exactly the three or four substats a specific character you're trying to play needs. A few more notes before we move on to the next section. You'll notice on the table that speed ranges are different based on whether or not the gear is purple or red. Purple gear can have between 1 and 4 speed as a starting roll, and it can also receive between 1 and 4 speed as an upgrade. You probably shouldn't be rolling gear that has 1 starting speed because it's essentially like you don't have a substat there at all as it's a very low value, and receiving a 1 speed substat increase is also like getting no increase at all, so you probably should avoid it. Thankfully, 1 speed is very rare, and for the most part, you're almost always going to see between 2 and 4 speed. When we take a look at the red gear, it's a similar story. 2 to 5 is the range, but 5 is exceedingly rare, just like with 1 speed. Obviously, if you start with 5 speed, you definitely should roll the piece. And if you get 5 speed as an upgrade, that is also a major blessing. However, 5 speed is insanely rare. I can count the number of times on one hand that a piece of gear of mine has started with 5 speed or has received 5 speed as a bonus substat roll. And I've been playing Epic 7 since day 1. So yeah, really, really rare. For the most part, you're going to be getting between 2 and 4 speed as an upgrade or a starting roll on speed pieces. Another note that I have to talk about is what we call flat stats. That refers to attack, health, and defense. Not to be confused with attack percentage, health percentage, and defense percentage. Usually, flat stats are inferior to percentage stats. They give less values than the percentage equivalent and are seen as essentially lower stats. However, there are times where it is appropriate to choose flat stats, and we'll discuss that in the specific section talking about each specific piece of gear. So for the most part, if you're unsure, consider flat stats low rolls, but again, there are times where you're going to want to have those flat stats, so keep that in mind and check the section later in the video. Gear in Epic 7 primarily comes from one of four places. Number one, hunt drops. The gear you want to acquire is usually from the 11th through 13th tier of hunts. If you're not at that level, you should prioritize being able to clear these hunts over almost everything else in the game. You won't be able to clear most of the game's hard content 
or perform well in any of the PvP game modes until you're at least able to start farming 85 plus item level gear. Number two, they can be acquired through various currencies in the shops throughout the game, such as say the conquest point shop. Whether or not this gear is useful to you depends on you as a player and what kinds of heroes you are looking to gear. For example, the arena gear in the conquest point shop is going to depend highly on what characters you're looking for and what season of arena we are currently in. Certain seasons have certain sets of gear with different substats. So again, it's going to depend on you as a player and what you are specifically looking for. Number three, through crafting in the steel workshop, which you can find in the sanctuary, which can be accessed from the game's main lobby. Here, players can use crafting materials that they've earned from the game's various different hunts to craft random gear. This is going to be one of the primary ways that you will get gear in Epic 7. When crafting pieces of gear, remember to look for pieces that have high stats or have the speed substat considering how important speed is as a stat in this game. For more guidelines on which pieces you should specifically be looking for, there will be a section after this one that explains exactly what type of gear you're looking for. There's going to be a high degree of variance when rolling these pieces, by the way, so don't get discouraged if you don't find something that you think is usable. And then finally, number four will be through equipment conversion from the Alchemist Steeple, also located in the Sanctuary. This is going to be one of the most effective ways for you to gear characters in this game. Players can use equipment conversion gems to make a piece of gear with the main stat and specific set of their choosing. Simply select a piece of gear that you want to craft, have the necessary equipment conversion gem, and then choose enough ingredient cores to ensure that you get an epic quality grade, which is located in the lower left hand corner of your screen. Now, let's take a second to talk more about what equipment conversion gems are, as well as ingredient cores. Equipment conversion gems obviously are the items that you need to perform equipment conversion. You could get them through either wall boss or through various different equipment conversion chests. Conversion chests are available via your guild, expeditions, various quests in this game, and also in the game's main shop, which you can buy weekly with silver transmit stones. I highly recommend that you buy that conversion chest every single week, by the way. As for ingredient cores, those can be acquired through extraction. Whenever you come across a piece of gear from hunt or through crafting in the steel workshop, you will have the option to either sell it, use it for XP for other gear, or extract it. Extracting gives you some amount of ingredient cores of the corresponding armor set and armor piece. Think of it like a pity system for gear. If you are looking for a specific speed set ring, for example, and fail to find something useful, you could extract all of those rings that you don't want and use those ingredient cores to make a ring with the correct main stat that you do want. A few final notes on equipment conversion before we talk about gear specifics. Number one. For the purposes of upgrading equipment conversion gear to level 90, you will need manifestation stones which are rarer than standard reforged materials. This is going to be the main drawback of equipment conversion. You have an easier time getting a piece that you want, but it will take longer to upgrade it to its maximum potential. We'll talk more about reforging later in the video. And finally, number two, when using equipment conversion chests, always try to choose equipment conversion gems that are useful for necklaces, rings, and boots. These three pieces have the highest amount of variance as each of their main stats can be random. Swords, helmets, and chests always have fixed main stats, so you only have to worry about four random rolls instead of five. Since equipment conversion chests are scarce and equipment conversion allows you to guarantee a main stat of your choice, it's simply smarter to use your resources by turning a piece that normally would have five random stats into four random stats plus a fixed one of your choice. What kind of gear should I be looking for? This question is one I get asked all the time in my comments section as well as my Discord. It's part of the reason why in my how to play videos, I added right side gear, as well as provide examples of what average pieces look like. The gear system in this game can be absolutely overwhelming for some players, which is why I wanted to take some time in this video to talk about each type of gear. 
I want to talk about things like what kind of stats those pieces of gear can and can't have. And I also want to give you an idea of what kind of substats you want on each piece. If you can't get every substat on a piece that I talk about in this section, that's fine. You need to start somewhere. So make pieces that are rough approximations at first and use those until you get pieces with all of the substats that you need down the line. When talking about gear in Epic 7, people usually refer to gear as either left side or right side gear. This refers to the fact that there are three gear slots on the left or right side of your character's live 2D art in the hero menu. Gear on the left side of the character, that is weapons, helmets, and chest pieces, have fixed main stats. Of the five stats that a piece can have, they will always have one fixed stat, which is their main stat chosen for them. The right side gear, that is going to be necklaces, rings, and boots, are much more varied. Pieces can have random main stats on right side gear, which naturally makes finding good pieces for them quite a bit harder. First up, let's talk about weapons, although sometimes we refer to them as swords because, well, honestly, almost all of the end game weapon icons are swords. All weapons have the main stat of flat attack. A max level 85 weapon has 500 flat attack. A level 88 weapon has 515 attack, and finally a level 90 weapon has 525 attack. If it isn't obvious, weapons cannot have flat attack as a substat, as this is already their main statistic. On top of that, weapons have a restriction placed upon them in which they cannot have flat defense or defense percentage as substats. I would say that weapons are incredibly straightforward in what to look for as they can mostly only have offense oriented stats unless you're looking for something very specific like effectiveness or effect resistance. If you're looking for gear for a damage dealer, you're going to want to have a weapon with attack percentage, speed, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage percentage. Those are going to be the best four stats for you. Health percentage can be a fairly decent substat as well, especially if the character you're trying to gear is a tankier bruiser type character. For players looking to gear tanks, healers, or cleansers, you'll want to choose weapons that not only have health percentage and speed, but also flat health and effect resistance, at least if your character calls for it. The reason for flat health is because there really isn't anything else to take advantage of here. Having attack percentage or critical hit chance percentage would make for a better overall weapon, but it doesn't really do a lot for a hero such as, say, Crow. He'd rather choose flat health since it helps him increase his survivability as well as his damage, even if it's only ever so slightly. For debuffers, you're primarily going to be looking for pieces that have both effectiveness and speed together. As long as it rolls very high in speed or effectiveness, it's probably a pretty good piece. The second piece of gear to talk about is the helmet. All helmets have the main stat of flat health. A max level 85 helmet has 2,700 flat health. An 88 helmet has 2,765 flat health. And finally, a level 90 helmet has 2,835 flat health. Like with weapons, helmets obviously cannot have flat health as a substat because it's their main stat. Other than that, Helmets have no real restrictions on substats that they can possess, making them incredibly flexible. It's usually a good idea to use your helmet slot as something that fills in the gaps in your character's current build. If you're looking to gear a glass cannon DPS, attack percentage, speed, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage are again going to be the best four substats for you. If you are looking to gear bruisers, tanks, or soul weavers, you'll want to choose helmets with a combination of health percentage, defense percentage, and or speed. Depending on the function of the character determines what you're going to be looking for in those last slots. Tanks and soul weavers will ideally chase flat defense and effect resistance, while damage dealers may forego one of the first couple of stats we talked about to also pick up crit chance and critical hit damage as well. Again, the helmet is a very flexible piece, and it's why I recommend rolling many different kinds and choosing the one you need to fill in the gaps on a character rather than making it the starting point for gearing your character. The final left side piece of gear to talk about is the chess piece. All chess pieces have the main stat of flat defense. A max level 85 chess piece has 300 flat defense. However, unlike the weapon and helmet, both the 88 and level 90 chess pieces have the same value, which is 310 flat defense. This makes choosing level 88 chess pieces from things like Hell Raid ideal as you're getting a solid piece of gear without losing out on any of the stats. Chess pieces cannot have flat defense as a substat because, you guessed it, their main stat is already flat defense. 
On top of that, chess pieces have the opposite restriction of weapons. They cannot have flat attack or attack percentage, and that would basically mean that chess pieces are ideal for getting defensive stats as their offensive options are pretty much limited. If you're looking to gear a glass cannon damage dealer, the only stats you really want on the piece are critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and speed. In most cases, the four substat should be health percentage, but not every character needs that, so you can honestly choose whatever you want in the last slot. Tankier damage dealers will want to choose a mix of health percentage, defense percentage, speed, crit chance, and crit damage. Tanks and healers are looking for health percentage, defense percentage, speed, and either flat health or effect resistance as their last stat. Debuffers are largely going to be the same as weapons. You're focusing mainly on effectiveness as well as speed on the piece first, and ideally either health percentage or defense percentage as a secondary if you want more survivability. Now let's talk about right side gear. Since right side gear can have more options, there will be a lot more build paths here to discuss. I will display the stat ranges for each main stat on the screen in the section in order to save time as it would take a lot longer if I were to read every single stat. It's important to note that like with chess pieces, level 80 and level 90 right side gear have the same main stat values. Now let's start by talking with the first piece, which will be necklaces. Necklaces can have flat health, health percentage, flat defense, defense percentage, flat attack, and attack percentage as main stats. It is also the only piece of gear that can have critical hit chance and critical hit damage as the main stat. For most damage dealers in this game, you'll want to choose critical hit damage as the main stat for your necklace most of the time. 70% bonus critical hit damage is quite a lot, and usually will add a lot more damage to your hero than simply just choosing an attack percentage main stat, at least in most scenarios. Another thing to note is the critical hit chance main stat necklace. Technically, critical hit chance is the optimal choice for damage since it gives the most amount of stat values compared to the other options. The reason it isn't the first choice I'd recommend though is because it will require all of your pieces of gear to have very high rolls in other stats like critical hit damage to make up for the loss of choosing it over other options. Essentially, it's going to be the most optimal choice, but it is a very difficult choice to actually make work. For both of the critical necklaces, you'll want to choose speed as one of the substats, for sure, followed by the opposite critical stat that you are not using as a main stat. So for example, if you're choosing critical hit chance as the main stat, you're going to want to have critical hit damage as a substat and vice versa. For attack scaling heroes, you'll want to pick up attack percentage and your choice of a fourth stat such as either health percentage or flat attack. For health scaling bruisers here, you're going to want to choose health percentage for sure as a substat and have the option of attack percentage, defense percentage, or even possibly flat health to maximize your scaling. It's again going to depend on the character. For damage dealers that can't land critical hits such as Hua Young and Senya, you'll want to choose attack percentage as the main stat for your necklace. These characters heavily rely on having very high attack to succeed, so make sure you're choosing pieces that have high flat attack as well as high speed, followed up by your choice of bulk stats, which is most likely going to be defense percentage. Everyone else actually has it pretty easy from this point on. You're probably just going to be choosing health percentage. If your character isn't a damage dealer, your only real main stat to choose here is one of the defensive ones, so might as well choose HP percentage and get as much as you possibly can. Always look for speed as a substat if you can, but other good substats to look out for are defense percentage, flat health, flat defense, and either effectiveness or effect resistance if your character needs it. Remember, those flat values are going to be largely for tanks and soul weavers that only care about survivability. The second right side piece to discuss is going to be rings. Rings can have all of the same main stats that a necklace can have except for critical hit chance and critical hit damage. They get their own unique options instead being the only pieces that can have effectiveness percentage and effect resistance percentage as main stats. For damage dealers, this one's going to be pretty obvious, but you're going to want to choose attack percentage as your ring's main stat as it gives you the biggest damage boost. You obviously can't choose critical hit damage here. Unsurprisingly, speed, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage are going to be the ideal substats, with flat attack being a good option if you're trying to min-max your damage, at least if you're an attack scaling hero, and health percentage being a solid safe option otherwise. You can also choose defense percentage as the fourth stat. 
Health scaling bruisers will want to take HP percentage as the main stat while focusing on a combination of speed, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage. They can also pick up attack percentage as a substat depending on the scaling, otherwise choose defense percentage or flat health. Tanks and soul weavers are perhaps the trickiest ones to gear here with rings. Some heroes, such as Krau, are able to be built with either a health percentage ring if you just want a pure tank, or with an effect resistance ring in order to have some resistances against debuffs. Regardless of which one you choose, defense percentage and speed should be substats that you're looking for, with effect resistance if you went with the health percentage main stat, or health percentage for sure if you went with the effect resistance main stat. The last stat that you can choose from is either going to be flat health or flat defense in most cases just to help make these characters bulkier. For characters that need high effectiveness, the only stat that you really care about is speed. The nature of debuffers in Epic 7, at least as of the recording of this video, are usually characters that need to take turn 1 and have enough effectiveness to land their debuffs. It's usually best to speed check every single effectiveness ring you come across and see if it rolls high on speed and base your entire character's build around that piece. We'll talk more about speed checking after this section. There are other characters that I could discuss in this section, such as Lionheart Sermia. She's a character that wants defense percentage as the main stat for the ring, but characters like her are super few and far between. It's better to consult specific guides for those heroes, such as the how to play guides that I make here on my channel. And finally, we come to the most important piece in the game, which is boots. Boots can have all of the same main stats as necklaces and rings, except for their respective unique main stat options. The main stat option that is unique to boots is going to be the speed stat. Speed, if you don't know, is the best stat in Epic 7, pretty much. You'll probably have noticed a trend by now in these previous equipment sections where I recommend speed as a substat for everything. Speed determines who gets to go first in a match, which dictates the entire flow of battle and gives your heroes more actions in a fight. It's useful and important in nearly every single facet of the game. 95 to 99% of all characters that you play in Epic 7 should choose speed as the main stat for their boots. Not choosing 45 speed boots is massively handicapping your character, and there better be a damn good reason for you doing it. We'll talk about some of those reasons in just a moment. For substats for damage dealers, the usual suspects are going to apply. You're going to want to have attack percentage, crit hit chance percentage, crit hit damage percentage, and either flat attack, health percentage, or defense percentage to round out the piece in the four slot, depending on what you're trying to do with the character. Health scaling bruisers will no doubt want to focus on crit chance, crit damage, health percentage, and either flat health or defense percentage, depending on what your goals are. Tanks and healers are usually just content with a good mixture of health percentage, defense percentage, and either more flat health and defense, or simply just grabbing more effect resistance. Debuffers, you've already got speed in the main stat, so the only thing you really need left to pick up is high effectiveness, especially if it's on something like hit set. So let's talk about those reasons we talked about earlier on why you wouldn't want to choose speed main stat for your boots. The most obvious one would be to choose attack percentage as the main stat on the boots to clear specific types of PvE content. Think of things like trying to build a one-shot hunt team like I talk about in my Wyvern 13 guide or trying to get a really high score in the Hall of Trials game mode. Another would be to squeeze out the most amount of damage or bulk out of a counter set character or a character with a counter like mechanic. These are usually damage dealers that get all of their value out of counter attacks such as say Rem from ReZero, a counter set Arbiter Vildred, or a counter set Green Armin. Like we talked about with Lionheart Sermi in the previous sections, these are usually much rarer cases and it's best to ask or consult guides if you're unsure. In time, you'll get a feel for when it's okay to deviate from speed boots, but as a beginner, again, I highly recommend you choose speed as the main stat. So I know what some of you are probably thinking, what about gear sets? If you don't know, equipment in this game has set bonuses, you receive bonus stats when you equip certain amounts of pieces of a given set. 
In order to keep this video length shorter, I've listed on screen now where each gear set comes from and what it is most useful for. If ever you're in doubt, the speed set, which drops from Wyvern, is usually going to be the easiest and one of the most useful given how strong speed is in this game. Choose your two-piece offset based on what kind of character you're going to be using as well. Something like Critical Hit Chance or Penetration works great for damage dealers, while something like Resistance or Health might be a better fit for something like a support or a tank. So here we are, almost 30 minutes into the video, and we're finally now talking about how to actually roll gear. I know it sounds like a joke, but I really wanted to impart what to actually roll on by teaching you things like substat spreads, as well as high values on those substats first. This allows you to make informed decisions on what gear to actually roll on without someone actually holding your hand all the time. Usually, my decision to roll a piece comes down to one of two decisions. One, it has high substats and has the potential to be a good piece. Or two, it has substats that would be good for a hero that I really want to play. And that second one is massive, by the way. Nothing is better feeling, at least to me, than being able to play my favorite characters in this game, and it's the main reason I started making Epic 7 Guides in the first place. I want other people to be armed with the knowledge that they need to play the characters that they too want to actually play. Once you've actually started rolling a piece of gear with either leftover equipment or equipment charms, you will want to take note of what substat is upgraded at the various breakpoints such as plus three, plus six, and so on. If the gear rolled into a specific substat that you didn't want, or it rolled into a very low value, you will have to make a decision on whether or not it's worth it to keep rolling. In my opinion, it isn't worth it to roll on a piece of gear if it doesn't have the potential to be an upgrade for one of your characters. If you don't have a piece of gear like the one you're rolling, it's best to finish it so that you have a baseline, especially if it's something like boots with the speed main stat when you're first starting out. If you already have a similar piece, you need to ask yourself if it's still possible for that piece of gear to actually have better stats than the one you're already using. In some cases, even if the answer is no, it may still be worth it to finish the piece so that that way you can have a backup piece for another character. As you roll more and more pieces of gear though, and start to have several dozen characters geared, you'll want to start being more selective and asking yourself often, is this going to be an upgrade for one of the characters that I actually play? If the answer is ever no, and you can't see yourself using it as a backup piece for someone else, you should immediately stop rolling. Gold costs and lack of efficient equipment experience are very real things in Epic 7, and I don't think you want to find yourself in a position where you're constantly broke or you're unable to upgrade potentially good pieces. It can be frustrating going days, weeks, or even months not seeing a specific piece of gear that you want. When you finally do get that piece of gear though that you've been looking for, it's usually super satisfying and in my experience leads to much stronger characters compared to ones that are hastily assembled with lackluster gear. All right, I've been talking about it pretty much the whole video, so now let's discuss the concept of speed checking. Normally, when you're looking for damage on a piece of gear, there are multiple ways to get it, whether that's through crit damage or attack percentage or even flat attack. And if you're looking to get more bulk on a character, you have four separate substats dedicated to that with things like health percentage and even defense percentage. The only way for you to get more speed outside of the main stat speed on boots is to roll speed on the substat gear. And unlike critical hit chance, which only goes up to 100, speed does not have a cap. Making matters worse, speed, if you recall, is probably the most important stat in the entire game. This means that it is incredibly important to roll every single non-boot piece that you get that has speed as a substat. Or at least the vast majority of them, you can skip a couple of them that have one or two speed on them depending on the set. Now you're probably asking, why should you, you know, roll almost every single piece that has speed on it? Well, that's just how the odds are in this game. Certain characters and builds require large amounts of speed to be effective, and you have at best a 25% chance of rolling speed on a given piece, and you still have to hope that it rolls a high number. Over the course of your career, you'll only have a handful of pieces probably that have rolled speed three or four times on them, and you probably can count on one hand the number of times that a piece has rolled five times. Hell, I've been playing Epic 7 since day one, and I've never rolled speed five times on a single piece in a row. 
Basically, with how important speed is as a stat and how hard it is to get pieces with high speed, you need to maximize every single chance you can get. Just like with the previous section, have an understanding at what point a piece of gear stops being a viable upgrade for you. While rolling, if a piece reaches a point where it already exceeds your current fastest speed for that given slot, whether that's a weapon, a ring, a helmet, then you should probably finish it and take it to plus 15. If it's not already faster, then you have to make a decision on whether or not it's worth it to keep rolling. As a rule of thumb, I personally roll purple pieces until I don't hit speed one time. Missing speed once means that at best, I can only have three speed rolls on that piece. Remember that purple gear has to generate a new substat at plus 12, and thus it cannot roll speed there. The odds simply aren't in my favor if I miss speed even one time for it to be an upgrade at my level of play, so it's simply smarter for me to move on to another piece. This keeps me from tunneling too hard on a specific piece that has an incredibly narrow, possibly even lower than 1% chance for it to be worth it. Usually, it will just end up being a massive waste of gold as well as experience resources, so it's simply better for me to confirm that pieces have potential early on while the risk and resource investment is low. For red pieces, I will roll them until I don't hit speed twice. Missing speed once on a red means that I can still potentially hit speed four times as I don't have to worry about that plus 12 roll generating a new substat. If there's ever a point where the piece I'm rolling doesn't pan out, I'm just going to end up feeding it into the next purple or next red piece that I'm speed checking and keep going until either I find a winner or I'm done rolling for that particular day. And honestly, that's it. Nothing really else to say about speed checking. Just roll it early, roll it often, and get used to doing it. Reforging is the process of taking level 85 gear and upgrading it to level 90. This can be found under the Reforge tab in the Steel Workshop in the Sanctuary. Reforging costs 200 of the corresponding Reforge material, which can be obtained from the highest tiers of each of the pieces of gear's respective haunts, as well as expeditions. Rather than read all of them out, there will be a chart on your screen now that shows the location of each material. Do recall that we talked about equipment conversion earlier in this video. Pieces of gear that you obtain from equipment conversion require manifestation stones, which can be acquired from all of the hunts and expeditions, but at a much lower rate. Again, this is the drawback to making gear using equipment conversion. Reforged gear receives a bonus to the main stat as well as to most of the substats. The bonus to the main stat is always going to be the same. However, the bonuses for each of the substats will depend on the number of times that that substat received a roll at each of the various breakpoints, such as plus three, plus six, plus nine, and so on. The chart on your screen will now show you exactly how much extra bonus stats you can expect to receive. Even with no bonus rolls, attack percentage, health percentage, defense percentage, effectiveness, and effect resistance will always receive at least plus one extra stat. With one roll in each of those, you will receive an extra 3%, followed by 1% extra for every roll to a maximum of plus 8% at five rolls. Critical hit chance and critical hit damage will always get plus 1% extra, even with no rolls, followed by an additional plus 1% for each roll up to a maximum of plus 6% at 5 rolls. Speed is a bit unique. Speed will receive no bonus unless you actually roll into it. You will receive 1 extra speed for each roll to a maximum of plus 4 speed at 4 rolls. Even if you roll 5 times into speed, you only get plus 4 speed via reforge. I can only imagine that this is to try to make speed less broken than it already is. As for flat stats, you receive a variable amount which you can find by looking at the table. You should, by the way, prioritize reforging gear that are on heroes that you know you're going to play. While it's optimal to wait to reforge only high rolled gear on each of your characters, there's something to be said about reforging the gear you do have now, even if it's less than ideal, especially if it will help you progress your account or accomplish a specific goal that you have it in mind. I leave it to you to decide how to approach reforging. Let's talk about crafting mileage, which is a relatively new feature to Epic 7. You'll notice a crafting mileage meter on the left hand side of the crafting menu. After you've crafted enough pieces from a specific hunt's materials, you will receive the option to create an epic craft. When hitting the epic craft button, you'll notice that you have the option to craft a piece of gear by clicking one of the flashing yellow buttons. 
Essentially, all this does is make a guaranteed level 85 red piece. You choose the piece of gear that you want by clicking the corresponding yellow button. After that, you just choose any set from that corresponding hunt. Now, for example, if you've been crafting a lot of gear from Wyvern and you need, say, a helmet, you can choose a helmet and also have it be your choice of speed set, hit set, or critical hit chance set. And while that's nice that you get to choose the piece in the set, the caveat is that it still comes with random substats, just like it would if you crafted a piece of red gear normally. There are two schools of thought that apply to crafting mileage in Epic Crafts, and I leave it to you to decide which one you actually want to use. The first one basically states that since an Epic Craft is just a random piece of level 85 gear, you should always spend it on left side gear since it has fixed main stats. This reduces variance by only needing to roll 4 stats instead of 5 stats, which leads to a higher chance at yielding a usable piece. I believe that this is the current popular opinion amongst the community. The second school of thought says, since right side gear is already an RNG crapshoot, might as well use that epic craft to increase the chances of seeing a specific piece, especially if that piece is niche. For example, a lifesteal ring with defense percentage main stat for your Lionheart Sermia. There really isn't going to be a correct answer for this one. If you're the type of person who wants to be efficient, choose the first style of thought. Otherwise, choose the second one if you're trying to rush a specific character. To round out the video, let's talk about modification gems, which honestly feel like a godsend feature. Modification gems allow you to change substats on your pieces into a substat of your choice. For example, if a piece of gear has three substats you want and a fourth that you don't like, you can use modification gems to convert it into the stat of your choice. This drastically reduces the variance when it comes to gearing characters in Epic 7. Modification gems can be obtained through clearing the game's various different expeditions and sometimes as rewards from various different side stories or quests. The substat you modify onto the gear will then be rolled at random from a range depending on whether the modification gem is a lesser or greater modification gem. Lesser gems give a lower range than greaters, so I recommend only using greater gems in order to get the highest possible stats on your gear. Just like with extracting ingredient cores, you can extract lesser modification gems and then convert them into greater ones using the alchemist steeple. Keep in mind that when you do this, you can only convert two greater modification gems per each gear set per month. When rolling a modification gem onto a stat, if you don't like the result, you can always use another modification gem to try rolling again for a higher result. Each subsequent roll cannot be lower than whatever the current highest roll you've modified onto the piece. This means that if the maximum value is say 9%, you can keep spending gold and using modification gems until you eventually arrive at that 9%. This all sounds amazing, but like with seemingly everything in this game that reduces RNG, there is going to be a drawback to using modification gems. Modifying a stat that has one or more rolls into it will return a lesser result. Essentially, you'll get the substat you want, but it won't be as high as if you naturally had rolled that stat to begin with. For example, if a piece of gear has, say, 16% effectiveness, and you tried to modify it into attack percentage, the maximum it can have may only be 12 or 13% attack. Since this is the case, I strongly recommend that you only modify incorrect substats on pieces that have no rolls into them. When a substat has never received a bonus roll, the modification values are equal to any of the starting values from the substat roll table that we talked about earlier in this video. That is to say, something like attack percentage or health percentage can range from 4 to 8%, while critical hit chance can range from 3 to 5%, and so on and so forth for the rest of the substats. Even though it may be a worse piece overall in the long run, sometimes it could be worth it to you to swap a substat with one or more rolls. Perhaps it's to get a piece of gear that you want to use for an expedition character, or maybe a specific character on your hunt team. I leave it to you to decide what you want to do. It is ultimately your decision and your gear at the end of the day. Just recognize that doing this will have greatly diminishing returns. Two final thoughts on modification gems that I want to talk about before we end this video. Number one, speed modification gems are most of the time going to be a trap. Unless you're modifying speed onto a substat with no bonus rolls, the returns are absolutely horrible and honestly not really worth it. Perhaps, again, this is Smogate and Super Creative recognizing that speed is broken and taking preemptive measures. 
regardless, speed modification gems aren't nearly as good as you think they would be. And then number two, when reforging a piece of gear with a modified substat, it still follows the same rules as the table from the reforge section in this video. In our previous example, we talked about how a 16% effectiveness substat being modified into attack percentage might only yield, say, 12 to 13%. If you were to reforge that piece of gear, it would normally receive one roll bonus or plus 3% bonus stats, and you would arrive at 19% effectiveness. If you converted that effectiveness to the 12 to 13% attack and then reforged the gear, it would still have the one roll bonus and thus receive plus 3% attack. This results in a 15 to 16% attack substat after reforge. Do note that it doesn't matter if you modify the gear before or after the reforge, the bonus stats you receive will be the same. And that's going to do it for the how to gear characters in Epic 7 video. This took an absolutely astronomical amount of time and editing to make, so hopefully you found it helpful, you found it useful. As always, share it out if you think it will help one of your guildmates, your friends, so on and so forth. And if I didn't do such a good job explaining something, please let me know down in the comments below. I will try my best to answer any questions that you could still possibly have about the gearing system in this game. Or you can check out my Discord, which will be linked in the description below, and ask me the question there as well. If you want to see more guides that are in a similar style for specific heroes, check out my How to Play series. You will see a playlist on your screen for that now. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Later now.